Hi YouTube, Travis here, and this is going to be a short two-parter video on performance tuning, a very, very basic performance tuning as I understand it. Here's the super short version. When you add performance parts that let more air into your engine, you start to run leaner. Leaner equals hot, hot can equal seized engine. So we want to let more fuel in to balance our air to fuel ratio. When I mention ratios here, that's what I'm going to be talking about, air to fuel, not oil to gas. To accomplish this, we put in a larger main jet, as I'm about to show you here, which are numbered. The higher the number, the bigger the jet, the more gas gets in. The Bing has a main jet and a couple other little adjustments, which I'll talk about here in just a second. Um, for example, on bigger carbs, like a PHBG or a VM20, uh, they have multiple jets, multiple mixture screws which you can mess with, but once again this is just a really basic introduction. Okay, and before I dive into the subject of this video, I'd like to go over a couple uh, newbie possible mistakes here that are actually really important. So, you should not start tuning your carburetor if it is completely stock and there aren't any performance parts on it. If you've got symptoms of running too rich or too lean and the bike is totally stock, you need to start fixing your problems. Easy places to look are clogged exhaust, um, clogged air filter, and on that note, I hate these things so much. They are so anti-user serviceable and hard to clean. Anywho, um, clogged exhaust, clogged air filter, air leaks, um, all great easy places to start looking for problems. On a Bing, you're going to find some numbers, let me get the light on the camera here. You're going to see some numbers right there. This one's 112.293, and you can go on the Bing page on the Moped Army Wiki and see what the stock jet should be for your carburetor if you get one and it's missing it or you're totally starting with a bike with no carb or whatnot. Also, I'm a big believer in the idea, especially when you're starting out, of adding performance parts one at a time. So, for example, you can start with a pipe, tune, when everything's running great, then you can add an air filter if you wish. Um, I know Treats sells what's called Party Packs, which is a bunch of different performance parts that they've all put together in one thing, so it's easier to shop and the prices, I believe, might be a little bit lower. Um, and that's great if you're experienced, but I'm a firm believer that when you're starting out and trying to really figure out your bike, adding parts one at a time is going to be the best way to learn. Because, you know, uh, if you throw a bunch of parts on a bike, then you could have problems from multiple areas and they're a lot harder to track down. So along that same school of thought, um, don't be buying performance parts to fix your moped. A lot of times you'll see, reading on Moped Army, people will get a bike that has, for example, been seized, and they'll buy a like 70cc performance kit for it, um, <laughs> and then be upset when they run into all kinds of problems. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is, start off, get your bike running perfectly stock, to the point where you can cruise up to whatever the original spec was, 25 miles an hour or whatever, you've got a good idle, um, everything's nice and responsive, then you can go ahead and start going out to get performance parts. So, when I talk about swapping out the main jet for one of a different size, we're tuning right here for full throttle. Sometimes people abbreviate it as WOT, wide open throttle. Uh, this is because the majority of the time, when you're riding your moped, this is exactly how you're going to be riding it all the time. So. And that's actually one of the reasons why two-stroke mopeds are awesome, because you can have it just pegged constantly. It's not like a four-stroke car where if you had it floored all the time, that wouldn't really lead to good things. So, when you change out the main jet, you're tuning for wide open throttle. From idle to three-quarter throttle, that's determined by the clip on the needle setting. This is that needle that I'm talking about. So I'm not going to go too in-depth about the settings on this. There's a really great write-up on page 58 of the Pook Service Manual, which I'll link in the video description. If you think about it, this is your atomizer right here, and the needle is going into that when you pull the throttle cable, which gets stuck in this clip right here. So when you change the notch settings, you're changing how far this goes up and down when you're pulling on the throttle like that. So once again, this is totally not an all-inclusive guide, this is just for starting out. Even your atomizer will affect um, how rich and how lean you're going. 
So there's a lot of reasons to go to performance parts. For example, if you get a heavy tire like the Michelin Gazelle, you'll lose about two miles an hour because of the rotational weight. Fantastic tires, but very heavy. So let's say you go out and get like a just a basic performance pipe, like a Techno Bullet, Boss, Bi Turbo, even. Oh, those are so ugly. Now you just need to decide what jet you need. Where the heck do you start? Well, one thing that's a good idea is to buy a range of jets. These are all the jets I have, and here are the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and then a random little bag that Treats gave me one day in an order, which was very cool of them. <laughs> You've got really two different ways you can think about this. Um, you can look at what your stock jet is, and you can, if you don't want to buy a, a range, you can buy a couple jets that are just above it. Jets come in quant multiples of two, so you'll have like a 60, 62, 64, 68. Uh, my Blue Pook, the 1.5 horsepower model, originally had a 60 in it. This does not mean that yours does. Um, so I first went out and bought, you know, 62, 64, but uh, I found that buying a range was much more convenient. You can also look at the tuner spreadsheet on Moped Army. That's a great resource because you can see what people with similar setups are also running. And that's that's also a good place to start if you've not followed my advice and gone out and bought a bunch of performance parts at once. <laughs> and one final thing. Oftentimes you'll see on Moped Army people will post a thread and it'll say, what jet should I use? And they'll post like what kind of bike they have and a little bit of their setup. Unfortunately, and the same thing goes for the comments of this YouTube channel. You can't really tell people what jet to use because of so many differences. For example, the bike could be in any state of maintenance. It could have air leaks. This person could be at sea level. They could be in the mountains of Colorado. They, um, there's so many different factors. You really can't advise people what jet to use. It's really something that they have to figure out. Okay, so in a nutshell, what I do here is I pick a jet that I know is going to be too big. I gauge that from looking at the tuner spreadsheet. And I pick one or two higher than it says would be appropriate for my setup. I pick that jet, I put it in there, I ride until I hear four stroking, then I down jet, and see if I ride, if I hear four stroking, I down jet again until I don't hear four stroking anymore. Then I do a plug chop to make sure everything's kosher, which I'll show you in my next video. Okay, so here's how you change out a jet. Okay, so make sure your fuel's switched off, and the first thing we're going to do is take off our screw right here for the carburetor. So the next thing you're going to do is disconnect your fuel line. Um, if your fuel line's old and it's been on there a long time, it's gotten hard, you probably want to have some new 316s fuel line lying around. Then wiggle your carburetor off. Pokey pokey. So get a 14 millimeter wrench, get the bottom of the ball off. There's probably going to be some gas in it if you've been running it recently, just be ready. Now I have what I like to call my jet screwdriver, which is this little yellow screwdriver here. This came out of a children's toy box. It's like a play thing, but it actually fits this screw perfectly. And get our jet out of here. So there's no way it's going to come up on the camera, but this reads 76. I know this is way too rich, way too big for this, this setup. I'm going to start with this, and once again, I'm going to work down until I stop hearing four stroking. Alright, we're ready for our test ride. So unfortunately I don't have my helmet cam with me today. So I'm going to have my camera in my backpack and you'll only have the audio. But that's what's most important when you're listening for four stroking. Alright, here we go YouTube. Just got back from that. As you can hear, there definitely was four stroking there. So we're gonna go down one size in jet from a 76 to a 74. We'll go out and do the same thing. You hear four stroking when you're at top speed. 
Um, usually when you're at top speed for a second or two, then you'll hear it. Let's go ahead and change out that jet. Out with the 76 and with the 74. We'll see what we get with this one. You can buy jets off of websites like Treats and 77 Mopeds, or there are some people, if you have the right size drill, can make your own. Well, YouTube, there you have it. That's how I choose the right kind of jet. Now to make sure that this setup's okay with the bike, I'm going to show you in part two how I do a plug chop. All right, well, until next time, YouTube, see you in part two.